Hello Internet, welcome back to my channel or welcome for the very first time. In case you're new here, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Matthew Van der Pitt, I'm a time life for living senior share and this channel is all about time life on teaching. That was a good one. Today we're talking about a very exciting camera that Canon launched recently, the EOS M50 which is a mirrorless camera. So classically, Canon's been releasing, you know, the PowerShot series and the compact cameras, and then their DSLR range, which is, you know, the big heavy cameras with the mirror that flips up and down depending on how you're shooting. Now, this is a Milk with a C, a mirrorless interchangeable lens camera with an APS-C sensor, meaning the sensor has a certain size. In this video, we'll do a really quick unboxing. We're not gonna to waste too much time on that. And then I'm going to give you my perspective or my opinion, my likes and dislikes, my love and hate about this camera as a time-lapse photographer, because I feel that's what sets me apart. There's plenty of other people out there reviewing this camera, but there's not that many time-lapse photographers doing gear chat on YouTube. So I'll be talking specifically about the angle of a time-lapse photographer and the Canon EOS M50. First up, we'll read the main specifications list, which you can find on the front of the box. So we've got a 24.1 megapixel CMOS sensor with that beautiful dual pixel AF. Now, unfortunately, that's only in the full HD recording mode and not in the 4K. It is an APS-C sensor, so that's called a crop sensor, meaning that's the aspect ratio and the size of that specific sensor. If you have a 50mm lens on a full frame, you times that by 1.6 and that will be the equivalent focal length on the sensor. Pretty much the sensor is smaller so the field that gets projected or the light that gets projected onto your sensor from a full frame lens, as you would have on a full frame camera, it's a part of that. So it looks like you're zoomed in extra, it's not actually zoomed in, it's just showing you a smaller part of that projection that comes in uh, the camera. I don't know if that made sense, I hope it did. A approximately 100% electronic viewfinder, that's fun. A very angle LCD for the vloggers, also a microphone input for the vloggers. And then we've got Wi-Fi, NFC, and Bluetooth, all those connectivity options. Now let's find out what's in this box. Bing, bang, boom. We have a Canon Collective Note, warranty card, user manual. This is what the inside looks like. First up, we have a mini strap, charging cord, battery charger, battery, camera, and a lens. Now let's take these out of the plastic and show you what it looks like. Immediately I can tell you that this is nice and light. Bam. So this is the body of the camera. Let's get that nice in focus. It is a sort of a plasticky feel, which I guess reflects the entry level of this camera. It is an entry level mirrorless camera. There's a lot of rumors online that Canon's working on a full frame mirrorless camera, which I'm very excited about. I hope that comes out pretty soon because I've been waiting on that for quite a while. Now, Further about this body, that's that very angle screen. So a very angle screen that's completely touch, which you can also use to pull focus. A little hot shoe flash slide out thing at the top. We have a pop out flash, which is always nice to have in case you really need it. On the other side here, we have the electronic viewfinder, which is nice and comfortable. On the top here, we have a scrolly wheel, shutter button, recording button, manual function, or whatever you want to call that button and then obviously the wheel and the power switch. Now the lens that comes with this one is the 15 to 45 image stabilized lens and it is an f3.5 to 6.3 STM lens. So this is a pretty fun little kit lens and it is also very lightweight. So that's one of the main benefits of this camera system that it is lightweight. I've taken off the front, look at that. Isn't that just cool? Isn't that just a cool shot? So that's the lens and the camera. Before you start using the lens, you gotta unlock this little switch here. Once you hit that switch, you turn the lens and bam, you are equipped with a 15 to 45, which on full frame translates to, I'll put it somewhere on the screen, lens. Still very lightweight. Let's chuck the battery in there. Boom, click, and there we have it. Let's turn it on. There we go. We're rolling, how oh, nice. This is a lovely little setup which will definitely replace a lot of DSLR cameras, I am sure, because it is equally capable but is half the weight or whatever. I'll put it somewhere on the screen how much it actually weighs and the size as well. And the cool thing, obviously, do not forget that with a adapter ring, you can mount any Canon glass on this camera, which is very attractive, obviously. Lighting's changed, the, uh, the sun's coming in and out, pretty annoying to film with. Now, I've been shooting with this camera for the last couple of weeks as a uh, second or third time-lapse camera, I've put it through its paces 
And here are a couple of things I really liked. First up, obviously the size and the weight. This almost fits into your pants or your jacket pocket and it is much better than carrying around a 6D or a 5D or a 1D even, uh, which is a bit silly to have multiples of those, but you know, there's, there's some weird people out there. The fact that you can use any Canon lens on this is beautiful. You're not limited to the M series of glass. So Canon is obviously known uh, for its insane lens lineup. I don't know how many lenses they have specifically, but it's uh, quite a few. I'd say it's industry leading. Um, and the fact that you can combine that on this camera makes this a very versatile little device. The connections built in, the NFC, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi works really well. If you have an Android phone with an NFC chip, you can just hold it to the side of the camera and it pairs and then you can do remote shooting or, you know, live view, download photos from camera straight onto your phone. And that is a feature that I really enjoy. I use that to shoot a flat lay gear sequence for one of my previous videos, which was very handy because yeah, remote shooting, obviously. When you need a remote shoot solution, having it built in is quite useful. Something that's really exciting for me as a time-lapse photographer, obviously, has been Canon's focus on the time-lapse functions in the menu. It started with the 5DS with built-in time-lapse movie mode. Then it changed up with the 62 when it had a holy grail mode. So you can shoot a time-lapse without touching the camera fully automatically from daylight all the way into night and it's a smooth ramp. I've made a video about that, about the 62 that you should definitely go check out if you're interested to hear more about that. They have put that in this camera as well. It's a 4K time-lapse movie mode. Now, not only does it have that holy grail mode, it's got different scenes that you can set up. So it knows if you, for example, wanna shoot with scene one, which is for traffic, uh, or people walking around, it puts in the settings for you and it's just, yeah, it's a plug and play system for multiple scenarios and that's pretty convenient to have in this little, little camera. Another thing I love is this screen. It is so useful to have a flip out screen. I use it all the time on my 6D as well. I have a 1DX, super expensive camera, doesn't have a flip out screen, really wish it had. I really miss it on any camera that doesn't have a flip out screen. As I mentioned, I'm reviewing this as a time-lapse shooter, not as a photographer or a videographer, so I'm not really talking about, you know, the lack of the dual pixel AF in 4K movie mode or any of that stuff. I figured I would just talk about what I know best, and it's time now to talk about the things that I really didn't like about this camera. Something that's been pretty disappointing to me personally is the battery life in this camera. Now, obviously you can buy more batteries, but I wish it just had a bit more juice in there so I could extend its shooting life. Now granted, I had been shooting with the LCD on so I could keep track of what it was doing and just to see how fast it would burn through the juice that it had, if I were to close the LCD and just have it shoot with the little screen in here or even turn it all off, it probably would have been way better, but still, I was expecting a little bit more out of it. The lens that comes with it is not the sharpest, but I guess that's like with any kit lens, it's just not the sharpest lens you'll get. Luckily, you can use the adapter to mount any other L glass on there that you wanna use. I like the way it's designed, but I wish it had one more scroll wheel. I'm just so used to having a scroll wheel at the top and a scroll wheel at the back, but that's missing on this one. Now, I gotta remind myself, and I gotta maybe remind you as well, that this is an entry-level camera, so you won't expect you know, all the professional features that you find in more higher-end stuff, because otherwise it would be at a different price point. So. Useful to remind yourself that this is an entry-level camera. The last point on my negative list, and this is the one that has put me off on buying this camera as a second or third time-lapse camera, is the fact that you can't do long exposures in a time-lapse. Classically, when you're shooting with, for example, a four-second interval, you want to have your exposure time set at half the value of that interval. So a four-second interval time means a two-second exposure to get the smoothest motion blur. Now, for some reason in this firmware, which isn't the case in the 62, that does allow you to drag the shutter or extend your exposure time, this camera is limited to 1 25th of a second as a maximum exposure length for a time-lapse frame, which honestly is quite frustrating and maybe that will be solved in a future firmware upgrade, but it's I feel like it's a bit of an oversight and I feel like if this wasn't in there, I would definitely get this camera as a little thing to carry on the side because I love the way it feels, I love the photos that come out of it. Obviously the quality of the video and the photos is great and the, the color science, you know, it's Canon, it, it delivers high quality. The speed of shooting as well, if you shoot with it on drive mode, how cool is that? So yeah, a couple of issues that might be fixed in a future firmware upgrade. We don't know, we can hope, we can send Canon some feedback maybe. And there you have it, my opinion on the EOS M50 as a time-lapse photographer. This wasn't a full review, obviously, but yeah, I thought it would be cool to give you my uh, insight on this little pocket device. If you have any 
opinions or feedback or questions or comments, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below, obviously. Leave us a like, a comment, a share, a subscribe, whatever we, whatever it is. I appreciate any action that you take on this video, which helps the channel grow. Come say hi on my other socials. I'm Matt Joes pretty much everywhere, except on Twitch. I'm Matt Joes Twitch on Twitch, which is hard to say if you've been speaking for an entire video recording. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will hope, I will hope, see, I'm losing it. I hope to see you on the next video. Top. Come on, mate. Honestly, these shooting conditions are terrible. <laughs> Look at the light. Hot damn. Wasn't... If this wasn't the... If this wasn't a...